Today I am putting out a call for prayers for a group of Carmelite nuns specifically and for the FSSP. The nuns received an apostolic visitation from Rome that ended yesterday. I'll go over what that means in a moment and it's not good. The FSSP are meeting in October to figure out what they are going to do from here in the post traditionis custodis post letter from the superiors to Francis begging to be treated with mercy landscape. What comes next has yet to be decided, but they're expecting an apostolic visitation to their seminaries as well. So let's go over what that all means. An apostolic visitation is when someone in a position of authority from the appropriate offices in the Vatican comes to visit your religious community, your seminary, your house of formation, or priestly fraternity for a formal visit to determine if things are being run as they should be. In this case, apostolic visitation means that the Vatican delegates are being sent to visit these traditional Carmelites and possibly the FSSP in the near future, to determine if they will be allowed to continue to operate, or to even exist as groups, or if they will be suppressed. The precedent for this is the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate, who, while still technically in existence, received such a visit in 2013 and were then functionally annihilated for being too traditional in the eyes of Francis the Great, an inclusive one. We get this story from John Henry Weston's news site. Headline, Traditional Carmelites in Pennsylvania announce apostolic visitation. The traditional Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate had undergone a visitation early on in Pope Francis's papacy, with very negative effects on the order. That's putting it mildly. Since the promulgation of Traditionis Custodis in mid-July of this year, rumors have swirled that the various traditional groups would receive such visitations. This is the first confirmed story we have, and their apostolic visitation ended yesterday. As of the time of this recording, there is no information available about how it went. From the article, quote, The beautiful Carmelite Monastery in Fairfield, Pennsylvania, with some 25 nuns dedicated to the traditional form of the Roman Rite, have received notice that an apostolic visitation will take place September 25th to the 28th. The Carmelites have sent out a press release and are asking for prayers and vigils, since such a visitation, which includes interviews of each sister and a detailed scrutiny of their lives, is a stressful trial in the words of the press release. The Carmel of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is served by a hermit, Father Maximilian Mary Dean, who had earlier been a Franciscan friar of the Immaculate. The Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate, an international order dedicated to the spirituality of St. Maximilian Kolbe, had undergone a visitation early on in Pope Francis's papacy with very negative effects on the order. End quote. This is not good news, folks. Here is the full text of the Carmelite press release. Quote, this coming weekend, we ask that you pray in a special way for our nuns. More than ever before, they are in need of your love and your support. In August, they received the news that they would be subject to an apostolic visitation, and the dates have been scheduled for September 25th to the 28th, 2021. A visitation consists of interviews of each sister and a detailed scrutiny of the nuns' daily life. It includes an evaluation of their application of the Carmelite charism and their monastic customs. It is for this reason we are asking for your prayerful support as they undergo this difficult and stressful trial. We pray that the nuns may quickly return to their quiet monastic observance. If you are able, would you join us for a prayer vigil at their property? From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. beginning Saturday and ending Tuesday, all our friends are welcome to stop by and say a rosary or just a few prayers at the gates or in the cemetery. Your presence and support will be felt deeply by the nuns, and they will be eternally grateful. On September 29th, the chapel will reopen at 9 a.m. for a glorious, solemn high mass. Mass will once again be open to the public after that date. End quote. The new orthodoxy is being enforced in the post-hermeneutic of continuity landscape, and any semblance of the traditional faith will not be tolerated full stop. This has been brought on by something very obvious, something that the powers that be in Rome do not like. Full parishes full of young, large families of the typical TLM parish and growing vocations at these monasteries and in these priestly fraternities. It is something they don't like to see, not because most of them want a tiny church, but because of the Novus Ordo parishes are slowly emptying themselves, and statistically, the bulk of them are. While traditional parishes are growing, and more calls for traditional parishes are coming from the laity, then the writing in the West is on the wall. The transformation of the church at Vatican II and after into an instrument of the secular world is at stake. They know this, too. Hence their hostility to all things traditional. Please keep these nuns in your prayers. It is not too late to say a rosary for their intentions. 
There have been rumors for some time about the possibility of such an apostolic visitation happening to the FSSP as well. A letter was recently sent out to parishioners at one parish in America where the priest answers questions from the worried laity. I suspect the sentiment he expresses here are echoed not by not an insignificant number of the FSSP clergy. Here is the full text of that FSSP priest's letter. Quote, I have been asked more than once about whether we should pursue another project, given the hostility of not just the Pope, but many prelates, clergy, religious, and laity to the Vedas Ordo. Could the Pope just suppress the FSSP? Yes, and if he did, the Bishop of Providence would be left trying to provide for your needs, which, be a, which would be a daunting task for him. The worst case scenario would be that we are ordered to leave the diocese and the parish would be closed. Could this happen? Yes. If it did, I've already made up my mind what I'm not going to do. I won't go independent, I've seen way too much schism in that department, nor will I join the SSPX, as if they'd have me. I would instead retire, get a small house with my meager savings, and hit the road in some area such as this one, going around celebrating Mass at people's houses, all underground of course, keeping the Mass alive and waiting for better times. As a society of apostolic life, we are very much working on each possibility and are planning how to fight like junkyard dogs, if needed. But more than anything, we trust our Lord 100% that he knew what he was doing when he permitted the motu proprio of this Pope. Our Lord, Lord told us there is only one whom we should fear, and it isn't the Pope or some cardinal with a chip on his shoulder about tradition. By now you've heard about the grave restriction of our work in Mexico. It is not 100%, and maybe we can hang on down there for better times, but better times may not be coming. To be honest, I have a feeling that this is the end of our work in Mexico. We will lose many battles, I think. Fraternity priests will be meeting in Nebraska from October 25th to the 29th for a recollection and an ordination. Both Father Trong and I will be attending. We need to stand on solid and united not just for our society, but also for the faithful we serve. Zoom meetings cannot accomplish this, so we may not have masses available for you during that week. Please understand that this might be the last meeting we have together as a society. I should add to the above that God will provide each of us all the means and tools we need to make it to heaven. We must, however, keep in mind that many times in our Catholic history, the means were things like exile, seclusion, destruction of our churches, physical torments, and martyrdom. We are not any better than our ancestors, and remember what our good Lord told the apostles, the servant is not greater than the master. What happened to the Lord in this world can sometimes, and will happen to us. End quote. So, just one thing, really. With respect to the priest going independent and being a lone priest, driving around saying private masses without a bishop or apostolic society to be associated with is being an independent priest. Now, that having been said, it is worth your time to keep the FSSP in your prayers in this time, even if you don't particularly like them, since among traditional Catholics, the whole SSPX versus FSSP situation is one that in our times causes needless division. And I say needless not because the arguments between the two groups aren't valid, because they are valid and they need to work all that stuff out, but because the divisions it causes among us are themselves pointless in a time when a wolf in shepherd's clothing is roaming about looking for souls to devour. Speaking of Paca Papa Francis, the community of Carmelites and the situation of the likely apostolic visits to the FSSP brings us to this. At Francis's most recent Angelus address, he gave a good post-conciliar style talk that, from the papal logia about the need for unity and inclusion. The tone deafness of this man is astonishing, and it leaves me thinking that he has to be trolling us. Here's an example, quote, The devil, who is the divider, this is what the word devil means, the one who creates divisions, always insinuates suspicions to divide and exclude people, adding, let us ask for the grace to overcome the temptation to judge and to categorize, end quote. Yes, the man who wrote Traditionis Custodis and has called traditional Catholics rigid and pharisaical told us not to be a divider or a categorizer, I guess. Okay then, duly noted your pack of poppiness. As Brother Martin Navarro of the Oblates of St. Augustine said in response to this on Twitter, quote, Traditionis Custodis literally forbids the TLM from being offered in parish churches. Cardinal Supich literally locked the doors of the TLM parish for the sacred tritium. End quote. So again, if we are to be welcoming to all, if we are to not be a divider but uniter, then maybe the author and promulgator of Traditionis Custodis should lead by example on this one. But he was leading by example in a weird way, because in his non-Catholic universalism, 
Francis had this to say that day as well, quote, I appeal to all men and women to journey together towards an ever broader we, to renew the human family, to build together a future of justice and peace, to ensure that no one is left out. Some hashtag, even though people don't really use them anymore. And he also said, Today the church is called to go out to the streets of the existential peripheries to heal the wounded and seek the lost, without prejudices or fear, without proselytism, but ready to expand her tent to welcome everyone in an ever larger we. End quote. An ever larger we, that is a weird phrase. But I have a novel idea. The traditional way that Catholics welcomed everyone into an ever larger we was to preach the gospel, to baptize those who were, those who were not baptized, to bring into the church those lost sheep that our Lord commanded the apostles to bring into the church. How about we start with that? Aside from the fact that in the quote he said not to proselytize, so I, I, mean, I guess not, but I only included what the Pack of Papa had to say in this because I want you to compare and contrast in your hearts this priest that I just quoted his letter from, the nuns from the start of this, and Francis. And then ask yourself this question, who among them cares for me and your salvation? My money is on the nuns and on the priest, but it could just be me. Will you pray for these nuns and for the FSSP? My only concern here is this. There's still a myopic vision pervasive among traditional Catholics that we, despite our differences, are apparently still not all in the same boat at this point. This goes beyond uniting the clans, as the saying goes, for my main issue with that slogan is that it is very restrictive and exclusive to certain priests. We across the board need to be working together to make sure when our priests go independent they have their needs met so they can say masses privately for the faithful, so they can offer the sacraments during these increasingly chaotic times. So please be prepared to help these priests out in any way that you can. A time is probably coming when the traditional liturgy will only be available in formal parish settings from the SSPX in many places, and illicitly from newly independent priests in homes, barns, and malls and other strange places, like it used to be in the 1970s. So be thinking and praying about how you can help them if you are able. Those are my thoughts on this. What are yours? Let me know in the comments, please, and like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.